understand the dead cat, the dead cat bounce theory. Um, I've 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 become very known for promoting, right? For for spreading throughout the the the, the trading community. All right. I want you to imagine that this is a tall building, okay? And on top of this tall building is a cat, okay? And we, we know this. We know. Many of you know this, but remember, repetition has a value here, okay? Well, we got a little cat at the top of the building. My drawing's not that great, but you get the point. Now, I don't know why anyone would do this. I am an animal lover. But if someone were to, unfortunately, throw this cat off of the top of the building, all right, excuse the example, but um, it drives the point home. If someone were to throw this cat off of the building, unfortunately, the cat, at the point of contact with the ground, boom, in most cases, would be dead. Right? Rest in peace, the cat. The body of the cat would likely bounce off of the pavement. But just because the body bounces doesn't mean that the cat is alive. A bouncing body, a bouncing dead body, is different from a live cat that is now climbing back toward the top of the building. And so this is at the core of coming up with the right belief. Is this bounce that we see here the bot a dead body bouncing? Or is this bounce not a bounce at all? Is it a climb? Is the cat not dead? And is the cat literally climbing back up the building. Which one is it? Now, the taller the building, the greater the odds that at the point of contact, this cat is dead. But every now and then, the cat's actually not dead. And so the bounce is not a bounce. It's the cat climbing. And God help you if you are still at the top of that building. Because that cat is not happy. And it is coming to get you. <laughs> so we have to really understand when is one versus the other? When is this a dead cat bounce? And when is it a climb? Because a dead cat bounce is going to fall again. And it should fall deeply. A cat climbing back up the fall is not going to fall deeply. And that's the difference. The dead cat bounce is likely to fall again and fall deeply. The cat climb, that's the two we're dealing with now, the dead cat bounce and the cat Climb. Very different. The cat's climb is going to fall back too, but not very deeply. 
and the next run should be meaningful. And if I can get you to read these two situations more accurately than not, if I can get you to determine with a high degree of regularity which one's the dead cat bounce, which one's the, the cat climb, you are going to be able to consistently make money from here. Watch this. Oh, that's wrong. You, I, I can then get you to consistently make money here. Boom. From there. And from here. Boom. And I want us to focus on these two areas. If I can get you to understand, first, how to recognize when it's a dead cat bounce, then I can get you, once I get you to rec be able to recognize that, I can get you to consistently look for the trade right there for a renewed move down. If I can get you to recognize when it's a cat climb and not a dead cat bounce, then I can get you to focus on entering your play there to benefit from the cat's second life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Dead cat bounces versus climbs. And how to milk both of these for consistent profitability. Tell me you understand this at least theoretically from this point. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Do you have the foundation? All right. Now, someone was asking... Great, fantastic, awesome. Now, someone was saying, Oliver, would the speed of the descent indicate if it's a continuation or reversal? That's a very, very good question. A very advanced question, actually. Is the velocity of the, the drop or the climb significant? Yes, it is, and we'll get to that. All right, so why don't I do this? I'm going to clear this out. Let me go to some charts. Give me just a moment here. And, ah, wait a minute. Let me, no, I can't go to charts quite yet. I got to do one more thing with you with my whiteboard here. So check this out. One of the keys to knowing, one of the keys to knowing, to having a good idea of, What's all right? So if your cat whoa, I'm sorry guys, my 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 barber's cooking. Um if your cat bounces if the bounce is less than 50% more or less then the odds are high that it's a dead cat bounce okay so we always want from the start of where the cat jumped or was thrown okay, or fell, we want to measure that distance from the beginning of the decline all the way to the point of contact. Now, we don't know where the point of contact is, is until there is a bounce. Once the bounce happens, 
we know this is the point of contact. You never know where the floor is, where the pavement is until the bounce. The bounce is what tells us where the, where the pavement is. All right? But if the bounce is less than 50%, the odds are high that it's a dead cat bounce and the next move down should be meaningful. Okay? That dead body is going to fall back to the ground. However, if that bounce, we'll do that in a, do this in a different color. Uh, let's do this one. If that drop bounces significantly higher than 50%, the odds are now high that the cat's still alive and that its next d decline is not going to go below the pavement. It's going to stop short somewhere of the pavement and then start its second life. Cats have nine of them, nine lives. Okay? Now, so we've got the 50% level. Now, I want you to understand that the 50%, it's not exact. It's not like, oh, my God, but this is 52%. It's 51%. It's, it's, it's a general area. So what we're talking about is a very unmistakable break, not a, well, I kind of think that's a little bit more. That's not enough. It needs to be unmistakable. It needs to be powerful. It needs to have that wow effect. Wow, this bounce was amazing. It went past that 50% like it was nothing. That's what I'm talking about. If you've got to question, wonder, stare at the screen and tilt your head to the left, it's not it. It's unmistakable. All right. Now, there's one other level I want to show you. There's the third level, more or less. If your body, if that, if that cat can't bounce past one third, it's super dead. And this drop and move should even be bigger. You understand? So there's the third mark that we have the, the one third mark and the 50% mark that determines how dead the cat is. The deader the cat the more severe most of the time the subsequent drop. So that's very important to know. In the same fashion, we have the two-thirds. We've got the two-thirds level, all right? And if your cat bounces all the way to the two-thirds, the pullback's going to be shallow. Shallower than the pavement. If we go all the way back to 100%, all the way back to the top, the pullback should even be shallower. And, and traders, look, if you can get this concept thoroughly understood, it will lead to a lifetime 
of opportunities. To have the right belief on the next move, you're not going to be right 100% of the time, never. But to have the right belief about the next decline, this decline that's happening, to have the right belief about that decline will lead to huge opportunities. To have the right belief about this decline will lead to huge opportunities. It's all about having the right belief about the current move to the downside. And isn't that ultimately the $64,000 question at the end of the day? Is this decline an opportunity to buy or is it a sign of trouble? And here's the answer. Get the answer to that question right most of the time and you will make a fortune.